Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a, a deck profile and I'm going to be talking a little bit about burnout. Burnout in the Pokemon trading card game right now is just, you know, you don't feel like one. There's nothing fun to do because a lot of this is just because the stand format is um, not the best. Uh, we all know this. I think we're all experiencing some sort of burnout. That's because the standard format right now, it's really, really bad. It's so stale. The same decks are doing well. If you try and play another deck, you're either just, it's going to be too inconsistent to work or you're going to get destroyed by ADP. So it's really, really hard to play new and exciting decks and have fun right now. So that's generally what burnout is. And I'm going to be talking about not necessarily ways to avoid it because it's pretty hard to avoid it. But I'm going to be talking about things that you can do and have a deck profile at the same time. So the thing that I've been doing, I've been experiencing some burnout right now. Now, one of the one things you can do is you can find a fun deck that's to play in standard format. It doesn't have to necessarily be anything. You don't have to play any tournaments. Maybe you just want to play a single deck on the ladder because it's fun for you to play. Um, that's what I've been doing. I've been playing Colossal on the ladder. I've been playing Control decks on the ladder. And I've also been playing Colossal in some tournaments, but I don't expect to do well. I'm just playing because, you know, I like to play Colossal. It's a fun deck for me to play. So that's why I'm playing it. But another thing you can do, and the other thing that I've been doing, is that you can play in different formats, such as maybe the theme format on PDCGO, the uh, legacy format on PDCGO. The one that I've really been enjoying right now is the Sword and Shield On format, and that is where you can only use cards from the sets released in Sword and Shield base set onwards. So that right now, that includes Sword and Shield, Rebel Clash, Darkness of Blaze, Vivid Voltage, and eventually Battle Styles. So it's a really fun format. I've been building a lot of decks in that format. And I think I'll do a couple more deck profiles for that. But I'm going to be showing you guys and doing a deck profile for the deck in this format that I've been having the most fun with right now. And that is Dragapult. Dragapult VMAX is, I think, is a very powerful card when the post rotation format rolls around. And not even right now. Right now, uh, there's not a great counter in Dragapult to Eternatus because it is weak to Dark. Kind of accept the loss right now, but I think once the Galarian um, Zapdos card rolls around, Dragapult can be Tier 1 because it can play that Zapdos and have a fine Eternatus matchup. So, yeah, that is just what I'm going to be doing a deck profile on is Dragapult. Now let's get right into the deck profile. So, for those of you who don't know, we're basing this around... Dragapult VMAX, a very, very powerful uh, VMAX Pokemon. It released in Rebel Clash, so it's a pretty old card at this point. Almost a year ago it released, but um, it only really saw success um, during the team up to Rebel Clash. No, not team up. Forbidden Light to Rebel Clash format. Roll to Prison, one of those. It's a Rebel Clash. Um, because Eternatus hasn't, hadn't been released yet. And one of the main things that make this card from being really good right now is that it is weak to dark. And that is the main thing that keeps this from doing well, is that it is weak to dark. And Eternatus is one of the best decks in the standard format and takes an almost auto-win matchup if you don't play an answer to it, be that Crushing Hammers, maybe Clefable. We're not playing any of those like I mentioned earlier. We're just playing... Um, we're just taking the loss to Eternatus. We're not even going to try and deal with it, but... Once Galarian's Zapdos rolls around, we can deal with the Eternatus. But this is the card we are basing it off of. Has an attack for one Psychic Energy Shred. We deal 60 damage, and it goes through all effects. So we can go through um, the Sidueye. We can go through Zamazenta. We can go through, I don't know, um, Metal Goggles right now, if you want to play this deck in the standard format right now. You can do that, by the way. Um, so Shred is a decent attack. And we also have an attack for two Psychic Energy Max Phantom. This is the attack that we were basing the entire deck around. It deals 130 damage, and then um, we put five damage counters on our opponent's bench Pokemon in any way that we like. So very, very powerful. The only bad thing about this is that it three shots V maxes, and we are going to we deal with that in the form of healing and in the form of a special energy that we can play with the Stragable. So that is our build around, and then. We have a to evolve from the Dragapult V, which actually is a decent uh, card. Has an attack for one Psychic Energy. We deal 30 damage, so it's okay. Having one energy attack is always nice on an evolving V Pokemon. 
And then we have an attack for uh, two psychics that deals 60 damage. But if we came from the bench to the active this turn, then it deals 140 damage. So it can be nice for denying prize cards. Make your opponent play an eight prize game because they have to go through two Dragon Ball Max and one of these. And 140 damage is decent. It's two shotting most of the um, viable tag teams in the format right now. If you're playing this in the standard format right now, then this is two shotting tag teams. But it can also be nice just for having a two prize attacker. So, uh, yeah, so we have four copies of Dragapult V. Um, like I mentioned, um, it is not a horrible card. Let's see if I can. Uh, I think I'll just do it. I did the Urshifu and just put it on here. We have the four copies of Dragapult V. Um, you know, it is a decent card. And then we also have um, three copies of the VMAX. So, pretty standard. A lot of VMAXs right now, they're just going... They're just playing a 4-3 because you only really need two VMAXs in a game and have an extra one in case you prized one. And then the four Vs so you can get it in your opening hand and start it and find it as consistently as possible. So that is our main attacker, the 4-3 line of Dragapult VMAX. And then I'm playing this with Chinchino. I think Chinchino is extremely powerful in this suspicious food tin slash healing kind of build. We're playing a 3-3 three, three line. And Chinchino has the ability to make do. It is, if you, any if any of you were playing around when Zorak GX was uh, the best deck in the format, or one of the best cards in the format. It has the same ability as Zorak Trade. Once during a turn, we may discard a card from our hand and draw two cards. So, this helps us find our suspicious food tins. This helps us find all our puzzle pieces so we can heal off that damage from our drag pool. VMAX, it also helps with energy in the discard pile so we can use Rose. And Rose and suspicious food tin is how we will be accelerating energy and um, uh, providing energy So because we have to discard for suspicious food tin. So I think Shino is very, very powerful and just talk a little bit about the combo in the deck, and that is Rose and Suspicious Food Tin. I'll talk about that more when we get to those cards. And then we have two little Rogue Pokemon, one Crobat, one Eldegoss. Pretty simple, standard stuff. Crobat with that dark set ability. You play it from your hand onto your bench, you get to draw onto your six cards. So a draw card that is not a supporter. And then we have Eldegoss that when you play it down from your hand onto your bench, you get two. Um, put a supporter card from your discard pile into your hand. We have three copies of of most of our supporters and two copies of boss's orders so it can be nice for getting back supporters that we've already used or that we had to discard with rose our draw supporters is for research to start our hand draw seven extremely powerful so uh yeah so we have four copies of professor's research the most aggressive and best draw supporter in the format and the three copies of marnie um, because disruption goes very well with Dragapult VMAX. If we can do anything to keep that Dragapult from being two-shotted, it's going to help. So maybe disrupt our opponent's hand so they can't get the energy that they need, or draw the cards that they need to take the two-shot. Morning can be very helpful with that. So those are the standard draw supporters. And now, like I mentioned, our combo is with Rose. Rose is an awesome card from Darkness of Blaze. That it lets us attach two basic energy cards from our discard pile to one of our Pokemon VMAX of play. Very powerful. But the huge downside is that you have to discard your hand. And that is devastating. You get to accelerate energies. This card gives acceleration to any VMAX that will be printed. But you have to discard your entire hand when you use it. The good thing is, is that we have Chinchino and Rose Tower. Rose Tower is, a, is the statement we play in the deck. Let's just once during your turn and draw until we have three cards in our hand. So what we can do is we can use Rose, accelerate our energies, and then discard our hand, use Rose Tower to draw three cards, and then use Tenshino to build up our hand once again. After we have to discard it with Rose. So I think Rose is efficient to ten as well with Rose Tower and Tenshino is very powerful combo. And that is another reason why Tenshino is just so good because it has so many uses. In your energy into this card, drawing your healing cards, drawing your rose, um, drawing out of your three-card hand on those towers. Just such a versatile card. 
in this deck. So, yeah, now the Lost of Supporters is two bosses' orders. We have Elder Gods, so we can get it back. Usually, what can be nice is that we can use Max Phantom, hit our opponent's active for 130, and then put, place five damage counters on our opponent's bench for Crobat B, and then later we can boss it up and finish it off. Um, because 50 plus 130 is 180, which is how much it beat Crobat B has. So, we only have two copies of boss. This is something that if you want to add their copy of that, you can. And then, as mentioned, we have the Rose Tower. We're playing three copies in this list so we can find it when we need it. That's the main thing. The deck, the list that I based this list off of, the entire concept of drawing with Rose Tower, um, discarding and accelerating energy for um, Spicious Food Tent with Rose, was a part of a winning Sword and Shield on deck. Um, like I mentioned, um, Sword and Shield on is how I've been escaping standard format and um, for my burnout that I've been having. So, uh, but there's these been tournaments going on. I play that on most TCG.com. Um, Tablemont has been running these Sword and Shield on tournaments. This format, you can play this deck in one of those tournaments if you want to. Um, and those are Sword and Shield on and one of the tournaments was won by a Dark Bolt VMAX deck. I believe it was Sir Schnips. Um, won with a Dark Bolt VMAX Rose Spicious Food Tin deck. So I based that off of this. He only played two copies of Rose Tower. And I really liked the third one because it was really difficult for me to find it after I used Rose. If you want, you could cut down on one, actually. Because if you get your Chinchino in play, you draw for your next turn. And you can, like, make do that away. But I just really like three in the list. Oh yeah, we also, if Cadox Well was in format, we would play four, but since Cadox Well is not in format, we do not have to waste um, one of our stadium cards trying to get rid of that Cadox Well. We can only play three. Iron cards for Quick Ball as one of our search, so that is pretty standard. We have four Quick Ball. We have four Great Ball. We have or Evolution Incense, and that is our search. We have four, four, four. This gets out um, all our Pokemon except Dragable. This can search out all of our Pokemon. And Evolution Incense is a really nice card in this deck, especially with Chinchino. But yeah, by the way, um, Chinchino is not in the original list. I put that in Chinchino in. I really like Chinchino in this uh, deck. But Evolution Incense gets out our Attacker and gets out Draw. So. Evolution Incense can be really nice for that, and Great Ball can also get out our evolutions as well. So the support, uh, the search engine is really, really, um, is really consistent. We have four copies of all the best cards in the format. Next, we have Suspicious Food Tin. Card I've been talking about the entire video. It's a very, very powerful card for Dragapult. VMAX. Suspicious Food Tin lets you get Lady Damage for one of your Pokemon that has a Psychic Energy attached to it, and then discard that Psychic Energy. One of the main things that you can do is you can either use Rose, attach some energy, then discard your hand, drop um, into maybe some of your Suspicious Food Tins with Rose Tower, Chichino for some Suspicious Food Tins, and heal off the damage, or you can rose before you play the suspicious food tins so you have energy on there to heal with it um normally what we can do is if we play two suspicious food tins that will usually prevent a two shot and that's exactly what we want to do with dragapult preventing the two shot gives us the momentum we need to take multiple prize knockouts and swing the game in our favor so being able to play two suspicious food tins sometimes maybe even three playing three heals 240 damage if you play four that's your entire hp so you can go like maybe Something get you for 300. Oh, yeah, I'm just gonna play. If, if you draw right, you can play four. You can play four and heal that 300 damage hit, which is absolutely bonkers. Usually, we're only gonna be able to play two of them, and two of them is usually all that we ever need to. Playing two will prevent a Zacian two shot. Playing two of them will not, unfortunately, prevent a Turnus two shot because Turnus is most likely gonna two shot us anyway. But it will prevent a two shot from a lot of things. So, four suspicious food 10 is a must in this. Build the deck. For switching, we have only two copies of Air Balloon and one copy of Switch. Two Air Balloon and one Switch. Three. Um, if you want to add a fourth, maybe another Air Balloon or another Switch, that would be fine. 
but all of our Pokemon have a retreat cost of one. Um, so we have a decent amount of energy as well. We play 11 of them. So being able to only have three in our deck is nice. It stays a space just because we, a lot of the things that we play only have a tree cost of one. Also the air balloon, uh, can, it sticks. It's not just, this is, this is not three switches. This is four switches or how many ever times it gives you, the air balloon gives you a pivot, which is big. Now our energies, four horror psychic energy. Um, horror, horror psychic energy is um, an energy card that when attached to a psychic Pokemon, whenever the psychic Pokemon is damaged by an attack, even if it's knocked out, you place two damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. So this horror psychic energy allows you to buff up your damage. Maybe, like I mentioned, you can boss up the Crobat and knock it out, but then you place five damage counters on your opponent's when your opponent's Pokemon, presumably, hopefully, their main Pokemon that they're going to be attacking with, you're only getting five damage counters on their main Pokemon. You're taking two prize cards, but you're only putting five damage counters on them. This allows you to buff up that damage a little bit more. For example, that five damage counters, if you have two of these, that can become um, 90 damage. So 90 damage is not bad, especially considering a two-shot. That can turn a lot of things from a three-shot with Dragable into a two-shot. So, yeah. Like I just said, this can move... This can change stuff from a two shot to a three shot. And we have seven basic psychics. Um, this is most of the time what we're gonna have to be discarding with Rose, mostly because or this, this is what we're gonna be want to be discarding with Suspicious Food Tin, because we can accelerate with Rose. We also want these to stay. These are good. We don't these we don't necessarily care about. They're just there providing energies. But oh yeah, so seven copies will be decent. I've been really playing around with 7 and 12. 12 feels like I draw into them a lot and I don't, I'm not able to get the cards I need. And um, or eight, of, 8 of them feels like I never get the cards I need and 7 feels a little bit too little. So, I don't know. You can play around with the energy count if you want to. But that is going to be it for this video. Um, yeah, I think the thing that really makes this deck good is the horror psychic energy. Combined with the placing five damage counters and aggressive draw, which in Chino and healing, all that combined is the perfect recipe for success. Being able to take multiple price cards and heal off hits is extremely powerful. That's what makes this sword and shield on Dragapult deck um, so good. So, yeah, if you guys, uh, yeah, it's gonna be it for the video. If you guys liked it, make sure to subscribe. And also, if you like to make, don't forget to like the video. Uh, I do a whole bunch of Pokemon trading card game deck profiles and stuff like that. So if you like deck lists, if you like new things to play, this is the channel for you. So go ahead and subscribe. And that's going to be it. And I will see you guys in the next video.